Hi guys and welcome to today's video on adding and subtracting thirds. Yes, this is where it all starts to get interesting. It's a continuation of my previous video. Now welcome, I am Darren, the Maths Guru, and it is really good to see you. If you haven't already done so, can you head over to my YouTube channel and subscribe? Never going to be rich and never going to be famous, but um, actually, yes, it's just nice to know that people are watching. And as you can see over there on my uh, left, uh, yes, yes, um, there is a caption there for my website, massguru.com, where all the videos have downloadable notes. It's free to sign up, so head over there if you can, and could be the best decision you've made all day. Now, what are we dealing with today? We are going to be looking at how to add and subtract thirds. As I say, this is a build-up of our previous video where we looked at thirds, why there are thirds, the difference between irrational and rational numbers. If you haven't already seen that video, please head back. It is pretty good, if I do say so myself, and not that long. Um, we're also going to look at what conditions you can add and subtract thirds. So by the end, you'll be a sort of third genius, uh, and even more so when I do my next video on multiplication and division. So as I say, in a previous video, we looked at the idea of how we can simplify thirds. And if we sort of do a quick uh, idea, there we go, root of 72. Now we could leave it that way, but we know that actually if we can find the product of a square number and another number to make 72, then life becomes a little bit easier for us. So that becomes 36 times two, or the root of 36 times two, which becomes the root of 36 times the root of two. And we know the root of 36 is in fact six. That's why we choose a square number and becomes 6 root 2. Now, why is this important to me? Well, basically, to be able to add and subtract thirds, certain conditions must be fulfilled. But again, why are we using thirds? Well, if we have, uh, and I keep using the idea of Pythag, if we have a triangle with sides 1 and 2 there, then we're going to end up with a decimal length for the hypotenuse. Okay, we're going to come back to that a little bit more later. But I don't want to keep writing decimal values. I would like to much, much, much prefer to keep the number as clean as possible. And thirds allow me to do this. So adding and subtracting thirds, we now know why we're using thirds. Can we add and subtract them? Why would we need to do that? Well, basically, ladies and gentlemen, interestingly, we as mathematicians and Barry is evil, uh, if you remember, hashtag no more Barry, because, you know, although we've had, tri you know, maybe this is a rectangle with three and ten. And we ask you for the perimeter and you're like, oh, I can do this. It's three plus ten plus three plus ten or the myriad of other ways of doing that. But what if we suddenly start throwing in thirds? If I tell you that this is root six and that is root four, no, that's, I always use root four as an example and root two. What happens there? Well, we're gonna end up with root two plus root two plus root six plus root six, doing it the tough way uh, or the easy way or the sort of most logical way, but how do we add those together? Well. If you remember with fractions, we can only add fractions when the denominators are the same. So there are rules for fractions. With indices, if we have something like a squared multiplied by a to the power of four, that became a to the power of six. Because the rule stated if the bases were the same and we were multiplying, then you would add the powers. With algebra, you could only add and subtract like terms. So if I had three x squared plus x squared, that became 4x squared. Why? Well, because the x squareds were like terms, and believe it or not, thirds very much operate on the same lines as that. If they are a like third, then we can add and subtract them. So here are some examples of adding and subtracting. You root 3, there's just one of them there. If I write a 2 in front of it, then there are two of the root 3. So 2 root 3 is how we say it. If I have, as I've got there, four root three, and I want to add them together, well, lots of people make crazy mistakes here. Don't add just the numbers together. So a lot of people go, oh, I can do this. That must become six root six. It really doesn't, okay? Where did I get the six from? Well, someone's added the two and the four together, and believe it or not, that's correct. I've got two somethings, and for some things, I must have six of those somethings. But again, that's my point here. If I had two x, plus 4x, then that would become 6x. And I like to think of thirds as some sort of thing, you know, like root three is a thing. I've got two things plus four things. What do I have? I have six of those root threes. It's that simple. Yeah, don't get tricked, don't get confused, don't add what's under the root sign, just add the two numbers outside. What about the next one? We've got four root six. So we've got four root six plus three root two, all right? So automatically I'm noticing there that the root six and the root three are different. 
The next thing to check, ladies and gentlemen, because math is a big fat trick, is can I simplify that root six? As it turns out, no, I can't. So I'm not going to, I'm gonna leave that there. I've got what I've got of minus three root six, and I'm doing this deliberately, and I've got another two root twos. So when I add or subtract those together, I've got to do with the ones with the like thirds. So I've got four root sixes minus three root sixes, which is just gonna give me root six. Now, yes, I could write one root six. It's convention not to do that. We just write root six. I've got three root twos, add another two root twos, gives me positive five root twos. And believe it or not, there is nothing more complicated to it than that. Just add together the like thirds, those uh, numbers under the square roots that are the same or subtract. All right, so as I say here, huge trick in maths, or particularly because we do it all the time, is to say things like three root two minus root eight. And again, lots of people look and go, oh, Nat, can't do that, Nat, it's too hard, Nat, can't do that, so they'll just leave it as it is, but it's a huge trick. With every single third, you should look to check to see whether it actually can be cancelled down or simplified. I don't like the term cancelled down, so we'll go with simplified. In this situation, root two can't go any lower. But what about root eight? Well, again, can that divide by a square number? Well, we're not gonna divide by one because that's, that's fairly pointless, to be honest with you. So one, four, hold on a moment, eight can be split up. So that becomes three root two, minus the root of four times two. Again, eight is four times two. I'm just re-expressing that under the square root sign, which gives me three root two minus, hold on, root two times root two, which gives me, uh, I've done it again, root two. I keep doing this in my head. I know the answer's two, I'm just rushing. So that's root four times root two. So that becomes three root two minus two root two, and lo and behold, just root two. So as it turns out, that can be simplified. Now, lots of people say, whoa, have I got to do all that working out for all of these questions? My advice, do as much working out as you need. Some people can see these in their head and bang, they just do them and you're a freaking genie. I, 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 I. Me, I have to do line by line by line by line. And as it comes later on in uh, your exams, you will be assessed on your working out. So please, please, please make sure you do as much working out as the question dictates. All right, examples of simplifying thirds to add and subtract them. Oh. I really do wish I'd stop choosing the examples I'm going to come up to. So let's do this first example. 7 root 2 minus root 8. You understand? Remember what I've got to do. Well, that can't be simplified, but that becomes the root of 4 times 2. That's 7 root 2 minus the root of 4 times root 2. At least I didn't mess that one up this time. So I've got 7 root 2 minus 2 root 2 which gives me five root two. Again, the root two is the thing that is the same, so I've got five somethings minus two somethings, and job is done. Now, bearing in mind, over at mathsguru.com, if you want these notes and these examples, just download them. They are yours, free to download. What about the next one? Two, oh, this is challenging. Two root three minus two root 27 plus three root 12. Now, the minute I look at all those, I go, well, hold on a moment, none of those things are the same but I can guarantee that I'm gonna turn them that way. Okay, so that becomes two root three minus. Two lots of, well nine's going to 27, so that's nine, 18, 27, so that's nine times root three, he says extending that, uh, plus three lots of 12. Four's going to there, four times three. Now do you notice that we've got a three here, a three here, and a three here? So basically, that's what I'm gonna end up with. I'm gonna end up with root three. So that becomes two root three, minus, that's gonna become two, that's already outside, times three, times root three. Where did the three come from? Well, the square root of nine. I'm gonna skip a step of working out now to make things easier. Three times two times root three. Where did the two come? The root of four. Okay, so simplify this. Two root three minus six root three plus six root three. Uh, well, these two effectively canceled each other out and in which case I end up with two root three as my answer. And believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this lesson, night and short, or rather nice and short. Thank you so much for coming along. If you haven't already done so, please head over to my YouTube channel and subscribe. As I say, it just lets me know that you're watching. Otherwise, there's mathsguru.com where these notes and the lessons are all ordered by textbooks and far easier to search and find. Uh, hopefully I'll see you in another video. If not, Take care of yourself. I'll see you again. All right, stay safe. Bye-bye.